We are going to see if we can't get the International Scout to run today. It's had a, a slight problem with, uh, huh, with an ignition control module, which is kind of funny in 1976. It keeps fried, getting fried. So I think it's the alternator uh, is wa pegged wide open. It's old, so it overcharges and pops it. So I'm going to disconnect the line from the alternator, swap out another ignition control module, see if we can't drive this guy around to this side of the shop so we can start working on it. Because you know, it's not like there's a, enough going on in this shop already. I've got two YJs, although that one runs and drives finally. So we're making some headway, but I just wanted a distraction. So the scout's my distraction. That would be the ignition control module. This is the firewall here oh, on this 1976 scout. And I have replaced it twice before First time it fried after like an hour and a half of driving it. The second time fried after about 30 seconds. So that's when I kind of started doing some diagnosing and I figured out that this line had been fried. Fixed it, put a fusible link in just in case it wanted to pop this instead of that. And in fact, it did not want to do that. So figured out that the alternator is charging like 17 volts continuously, even at idle. So I know why it's frying it now. And I really just want to hear this thing run. So I'm replacing it and disconnecting the alternator, which I know is probably stupid, but haven't you ever had days where you just want to hear an old American V8 run? Kind of regardless of any sense it does or does not make. So it's pretty straightforward to change this thing out. There are four screw holes on it, but three screws into the firewall and one of those is the ground and I dropped this stupid thing she's nestling pretty far in here anyway let's see if I can get that oh there it is yes yeah, so there we are these are obviously pretty universal fit because that single hole in the middle there does not get used. The two for four on the outside actually do. And then this is the ground on it, which is the ground here. So you gotta make sure you have a clean screw for that side of it. Let's get our new part and put it in. I'm gonna start with my cleanest ground screw first. My knowledge on these old scouts is limited. This is the only one I've ever messed with. All these old vehicles are pretty similar. And by old vehicles, I mean old Fords and old Jeeps. Nothing foreign. And even then, I really don't mess with old stuff. You give me a 2017 diesel with a problem and I can fix it. But you give me one of these things and I just, I know they're more simple, but I want to make them much more difficult than they are to work on. And it messes with my head. We are going to figure out which line from the alternator we need to disconnect and disconnect that shortly and then see if she runs. I'm sure all you can hear in that video right now in the background is the music inside the shop which is not obnoxious at all. It's very obnoxious. And there you have it. It is an ignition control module that has been replaced. I know this is a terrible quality video, but it's sitting around the back of my shop. It's the best I can do. But this is an International Scout 1976. It is actually a Scout 2 Traveler. Just did the ignition control module on it. It has not run in six months Let's see if we can get it to run at all
So that is her in all of her not so much glory. That is a 1976 International Scout. I got it from the guy who bought it new. Lucky, I think I'd call that a barn find. It is for a Scout rust free. Through anyone else's, I wouldn't say it was rust free. But it's not terrible. There's a mess out here. This is another project that we got distracted on. Anywho, there's a little bit of rust down there. Other than that, she is a Scout 2 Traveler with a 345 V8. And it sat not running for 13 years. I picked it up by chance, honestly. Didn't think I'd get a chance to own this sweet thing. Oh yeah, factory power steering, factory AC. It's got not the third row seat, but turn the key on, push the button. She'll almost run. One more time. There we go. Idles. Goes in drive, goes in reverse, four wheel drive works, everything works on this thing. It never ceases to amaze me because seriously, it sat for 13. Probably out of gas. 13 years it didn't run. And I get this thing and I do minimal to it. I mean, talking like spark plugs, wires, distributor, rotor, cap. You know, the normal tidbits to get something running that's been sitting for a while. All the fluids got changed, all that kind of stuff. And then I got in it one day after doing that. I haven't touched the carburetor, never cleaned it. this well. All the lights work, everything. So I might have a full build on this video on 